All right, so your Alta just arrived, um, and you've got your Movi Pro and your batteries and your transmitter, and you're ready to fly. I'm going to show you how we prep and get ready for a safe flight with the Alta X. So, first step, we're going to need to unfold, um, latch the booms, get the batteries mounted. So I'm going to take the straps off. Don't lose these. Put them in your case or wherever you keep your things while you're flying. Okay, let's fold it open. I'm gonna do latch number one. I'm gonna do latch number two. Always good to checklist, latch one, latch two. Those are two of the most important steps in pre-flighting pre in Alta X. Uh, I'm gonna get the battery straps ready for the batteries. I like to alternate the battery straps, so I go one and three on one side and two and four on the other. Okay, so I've got 12S 16 amp hour flight packs ready to go here. Remember to put the leads in towards the middle. It makes it a little bit easier to connect it up. Make sure these are nice and snug. There's two straps per battery. If you ever had a strap failure, you still have another strap to keep you safe. Get these lined up towards the plugs. Gonna get that guy strapped in. This guy strapped in. This uh, this machine is set up as though you ordered a Futaba uh, 14SG from FreeFly. So the radio will come pre-installed. All the model setup is done. This is set up to have three flight modes: uh, manual, height hold, position mode, and then uh, return to home, set home, and a return to home switch. On uh, we put it on switch C. Um, so that's all set up and ready to go. If you if you didn't if you need the Futaba setup for the Alta X, you can get it off of the wiki. You can actually just download it, install it on this radio, or you can set it up yourself via Q Ground Control, however you need to. So next, I would um, I'm going to set this up just to fly without a gimbal for now, just with the bottom the the Skyview landing gear. Um, so the next thing I would do is check out the props and the flop adapter bumpers, make sure everything looks good. Leading edge of the props look good, trailing edge of the props look good. These bumpers are good, all the screws, all the bolts are in and tight. Let's do a quick walk around. All the boom struts look good. All the active blade dampers look good, the motors are spinning free. No debris in there, nothing going on. FPV is good. GPS is rigidly attached. Okay, everything looks good. FPV. I'm going to turn on my transmitter. My biggest fear is always having the controller um, die mid-flight. So first thing I'm going to do is check, make sure I've got a lithium battery in this. It's fully charged. It's reading 7.4 volts, so it's right in the middle of its the discharge, the meat of its discharge, I know we're going to be okay for a flight. I've got my timer set up the way I like them. I've got it set up to receive um, battery voltage from the Alta, that's what I like, so I know how much flight time I have left. Battery packs are secure. I know the voltage on these batteries are good, the voltage on my transmitter is good. I'm going to take a look at the battery leads, make sure they all look good. Nothing. You know, no one's shorted these out since I last used them. The inputs on the aircraft look good and clean. That's going to make good contact. Um, blade dampers we checked. So now I'm going to move it away from my immediate vicinity. And I'm just going to set it on the ground here. And then I'll plug it in, boot it up, make sure everything's good. Let's get this right over here. I'm actually taking off a little bit closer to myself than I would normally just for the sake of this tutorial, but I always recommend putting as much space between the aircraft and yourself as possible. Plug both these batteries in. Make sure both XT90s mount all the way down. Let the aircraft sit stable to boot up. I'm going to step out of the reach of the props just so I know I'm safe. One thing I, um, I usually don't do, keep your transmitter, like if you're on a film set, keep your transmitter with you. 
or make sure it's in a safe location. I've had times before where people have walked up, I've been working on the machine, doing something, people grab the transmitter, start playing with it, they could potentially turn the machine on, it's, it's risky. Uh, I would just establish a safe area where you know only the drone crew will be touching anything associated with the drone. Okay, so we've got GPS lock, we're good to go. So one last check of my transmitter, I'm gonna get comfortable, make sure my neck strap's the right length, check my voltage. I'm getting telemetry voltage, my receiver voltage is good. I'm at 50.1 volts on the main flight packs, 4.8 volts on my receiver, which is a good voltage. Got my switch set to manual, my RTH switch set properly. Now I'm gonna power on and I'm gonna let the aircraft go to idle. So it's gonna come up to idle and I'm gonna throttle up a little bit so I have cyclic control. And then I'm gonna, this is one thing I always do before I take off. Give it a left, make sure it goes left. Give it a right, make sure it goes right. Push forward, make sure it goes forward. I'm doing this very gently. Pull backwards, make sure it comes backwards. Eventually you get into a thing where you do a, kind of a circular move where you do a pilot check. Make sure all your control surfaces are going the way that you expect. And then I'll slowly idle up. And with no payload, this will lift right off the ground. And as the props come up into plane, I'm checking to make sure that everything looks like it's tracking well, everything looks smooth. Looking at all the wires, making sure there's no vibration, nothing weird going on. I'm looking at the boom LEDs to make sure that they're not shaking, nothing weird. Just doing a last little visual check before I start flying around. All the boom struts are engaged, everything looks good, it's responding nominally. Then I can start moving around a little bit and gaining confidence. And I recommend, you know, keeping the drone away from yourself. There's no reason to fly close to yourself unless you need to. The other thing I like to teach people when I'm teaching them how to fly is never build momentum at yourself. So always fly flight lines that keep the drone building momentum and inertia away from you. All right, I'm going to bring it in and land. So I always land and take off in manual mode. Um, So the things I'm thinking about when I'm landing, I'm gonna make sure that the spot I've chosen is level. I'm gonna eyeball it, pick that landing spot, and then I'm gonna slowly set it down. And then I'm gonna throttle down. And as soon as it goes down to idle, I'm gonna turn the machine off. <clears throat> and then unless I'm gonna fly again quickly, the first thing I'll do, set down my transmitter in somewhere safe or keep it with me, walk immediately in, and unplug the 2XT90. Uh, I do that just because now I know the machine's safe. Even if a kid runs up and grabs my controller and does whatever, nobody's gonna get hurt from this thing and it just uh, leaves me feeling easier about um, safety. So, and that's how, that's how I would suggest you go about your first flight. Um, additionally, it's always nice if you can find somebody who has experience with an Alta 8 or an Alta X nearby, see if they'll attend your first flight. Uh, it's, or, or you can consider uh, training with FreeFly. Adam from the FreeFly team does trainings kind of non-stop for people that want to learn how to fly big cinema drones and he'll spend a day or two out at our test field here with you running you through the process and teaching you how to operate like a pro. Uh, so I hope that helps and uh, I'll see you next time.